going to do more related rates problems, but these are going to be a little bit tougher. But they're not that bad. They're not that much tougher. Okay? As long as you understand your fixed quantities and your fixed relationships, you can make what starts out as like a tough problem with a derivative that is very complex to a very easy problem with a very non-complex derivative. Okay? Uh, also, use your original formula for missing values. Let me show you what that means by doing the examples that we have in our notes. First one, this is just like the one you had on your quiz. We have a cylindrical tank, it's losing water at this rate. The radius is 10 feet. How fast is the height of the water changing? I'm going to write everything down. So we're losing water, so that's dv dt, that's negative 10. The radius is 10. How fast is the height of the water changing? Okay. I know the volume of a cylinder, just any cylinder, is pi r squared h. Okay. But for a cylinder, the radius of the cylinder is always going to be fixed, which means the water in the cylinder will always have a fixed radius as well. So this is always going to be true. So I'm going to change my formula from just the formula of a random cylinder to the formula of the volume of the water in my tank and change this to a pi 10 squared times h. This will be a lot easier to deal with. If I took the derivative of this, I'd have to use the product rule, but knowing that this is the formula for the volume of my water in my tank, I can take the derivative of this, which is simply 100 pi dh dt. Trying to find dh dt, dv dt is negative 10. And I can solve for dh dt, negative 1 over 10 pi. Okay? How fast is the height of the water changing? We get a negative value. Okay? So if h's derivative is negative, that means h is decreasing. The height of the water is going down. Does that make sense? Yes. The volume of the water is going down, so the height should be going down. So Voila, this would be in feet, okay? Plugging in fixed values, that's the key. Next problem, we have a growing rectangle that has a length that is twice the width. So the length is twice the width. How fast is the perimeter growing? I'm going to say that's dp dt. If the width is growing, dw dt, at a rate of 5 centimeters per second. Okay, well, the perimeter of a rectangle we know is just 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. This is something you'd have to produce. I would not be giving you the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Okay? Now, if I took the derivative of this, I'd have dp, dt, dl, dt, and dw, dt. However, we are told this is the relationship between the lengths and the widths of this rectangle. This is what we call a fixed relationship. Which means, yeah, a perimeter of any rectangle is this. But the perimeter of this growing rectangle, I'm going to call it my rectangle, is going to be 2 times 2w plus 2w, which is just 4w's plus 2w's, 6w's. I'm going to take the derivative of my rectangle that I have, not of any random rectangle. And I just get dp dt is equal to 6 dw dt, plug in 5, and I get 30. This is in a length, so it's the units to the first power. It'll be centimeters per second. Okay? Your homework problem that you had was one of these situations with a fixed relationship. Okay, this is just like your homework problem that you just had. A pile of sand is being, uh, a, it should be a conical. We can write in a conical. Pile of sand, so here's my pile of sand. It's being formed by a conveyor belt that is adding sand at a rate. So that would be the change in the volume of 5 cubic feet per minute, the radius of the sand pile, 
is three times larger than the height of the sand pile. How quickly is the height changing when its radius is four feet? Simple, write down all the information based on the problem. We have the volume of a cone, the random volume of a cone of any random cone is one third pi r squared h. But this sand pile has a very specific relationship between the radius and the height of the sand. This is a fixed relationship. Since it's fixed, I'm going to change the formula that I'm using from just the volume of a random cone to the volume of the sand pile, and I'm going to replace R with 3H. Now, this is good. Now, we could also have written this fixed relationship as H equals one-third R, and we could also have plugged in one-third R for H. But let's recall what we're trying to find. We're trying to find dH dt. So I need to have h's in that formula. So when I take the derivative, it'll give me dH dt. Now, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. The volume of my sand is going to be, now remember, you've got to square the 3h, so that'd be 9h squared. The 9 times the 3 is going to give me 3 pi h squared times h, h cubed. This is an easier formula to deal with. I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to t, giving me dv dt is equal to 9 pi h squared dh dt. Okay? All right, so I need h's. I have dh dt. But I have dv dt, that's 5, so I got 5 is equal to 9 pi. But I got this h squared here that I got to take care of, okay? This comes the final step. This is similar to the homework problem you had where you had like x, y equals 8. And you're saying like find dy dt when x is 4. In this situation, we're not going to leave this answer like this. We need to figure out what, eight, what h is. But use like the formula that you're given or a relationship that you're given to find this H. When R is 4, I can find out what H is. H is just going to be 4 thirds. Whoa. How does that happen? When R is 4, 4 equals 3H. H is 4 thirds. Plug in four thirds for H, solve for DHTT. At 16 ninths, the nines will cancel. I have five over 16 pi DHTT. This would be a height, so it would be feet per minute. Okay, so fixed relationships can be plugged in. Use a simplified formula for what's going on with your situation. Take the derivative of that. It'll make things easier, okay? So the next set of our problems will be all very similar because they're all going all to gonna talk about distances. Okay, a person is watching the space shuttle launch. The person is 3,000 feet from the launch pad. How fast is the distance between the person and the shuttle changing when the shuttle is 4,000 feet high, rising at a rate of 800 feet uh, per second? Okay, I'm going to just draw a picture just so we can understand what's going on here. Okay, so I got a person who is watching the space shuttle launch, who is a distance away from the launch pad. Here's the space shuttle being launched. Space shuttle is going up in the air. It's got a given height about it. And we have a distance here between them. Okay? What did we just create? A nice old right triangle. Okay? 
So when we're dealing with distances, we will be using our friends the right triangles, and we're going to be using our formula d squared, the distance diagonally, will equal a horizontal distance squared plus a vertical distance squared. And I'm going to be finding this change, or dd dt. Okay. Now, what else am I given? I'm given that the person is 3,000 feet from the launch pad. That's X, right? That's our horizontal distance. I'm trying to find DDDT, how quickly that is changing. The shuttle is going to be 4,000 feet high. And I want to find DDDT when Y is 4,000. And I know it's rising at a rate of 800 feet per second, so it's going up. So that'd be the change in my Y, dy dt, is 800. Okay, so far so good. Now I could take the derivative of this, and I can show you how it would work, and we would be able to find out the answer just by taking the derivative and plugging in some values. But there might be something that some people might not understand. And actually, I want to make this problem easier to deal with. So what I'm going to take note of is that this distance that the person is standing away from the launch pad is a fixed distance. It is not going to change. It's always going to be 3,000. This 4,000, this is just a specific moment in time. This is changing because the shuttle is going up. Okay, it's important to know that. We're not going to be able to plug in this 4,000 until after we take the derivative to find DDDT at the specific moment. But random right triangle, use the Pythagorean theorem. For our space shuttle, I can use a modified Pythagorean theorem by plugging in 3,000. And all of a sudden, I have a more specific formula for this situation because this is fixed. Okay? I am going to take the derivative of it now because I want to find DDDT. I need to take the derivative of this to get DDDT. I get 2D DDDT is equal to. What's the derivative of 3,000 squared? Zero. Excellent. That's a constant. This is why we did this. So when we take the derivative of it, it goes away. And this is just zero, and this becomes 2y dy dt. And of course, these lovely twos can cancel right away. Okay? Try to find d dt. I have y. I want to find d, 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 t exactly when y is 4,000 and d, y, d, t is 800. But I got a problem. I wasn't given d. But it's not a problem because I can find d using x, which is 3,000, and y is 4,000 using my original formula. Okay, so there is an extra step with this, just like the same kind of extra step with that conical pile. I need to find D, knowing that X is 3,000 and Y is 4,000. D squared is equal to 3,000 squared plus 4,000 squared. This is just using your original formula. You'd find that D is our friend 5,000. We have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So this is 5,000 D, 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 T is equal to 4,000 times 800. Three zeros will cancel. I have 3,200 divided by 5. Which is a number. What is that? Is it 640? Great. 
This would be feet per second. Okay. I would like you guys to try to tackle the ladder problem. I'm going to draw the picture for you, but it's going to be the same as the last type of problem in that our friend the right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem will help us. We have a 10-foot ladder. The lower end is being pulled away at a rate of two feet per second. Question is, how fast is the top of the ladder coming down the wall when the top of the ladder is six feet above the ground? Go. Only way we'll be good at these problems is by practicing these problems. The height of the ladder is not going to change. That's going to stay fixed. It's a 10-foot ladder. It's not an adjustable height ladder. So since it's a 10-foot ladder, you can plug in 10 right away. Then you can take the derivative of everything. This will be 0, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. The 2s can cancel here as well. Just divide everything by 2. dx dt is 2, 1y is 6, trying to find dy dt, but I have missing information, x. need to find x when y is 6 and d is 10. Using the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus 6 squared is equal to 10 squared, you'd end up with x being equal to 8. A 6, 8, 10 triangle. So 0 equals 8 times 2 plus 6 times dy dt. Solving for dy dt, you have negative 16 over 6, which is the same as negative 8 thirds. That'd be in feet per second. dy dt is negative. Does that make sense to us? Ladder's coming down, right? So dy dt is negative. That means 
y is decreasing in its values. So that decreasing means we're going down. Okay? Good. We're going to skip the fish problem. We're going to move on to angles. Go back to that space shuttle. Okay? Person watching the space shuttle launch 30,000 feet from the launch pad. The question is now, here's the rocket going up in the air. How quickly is the angle of elevation changing? That's this right here, theta. When the shuttle is 4,000 feet high, and rising at a rate of 800 feet per second. Now we're going to think, oh, right triangle. I should be using d squared, x squared, and y squared. No, there's no thetas there. I can't get a d theta dt, which is what I'm trying to find. How quickly is that angle changing? Okay. What formula has thetas in it? Our good friend, Chief Sokotoa, has three formulas with thetas in it. Okay, now what's going to be really, really important is using the correct one of these three, sine or cosine or tangent, okay? So choose the correct trig function. We're not just going to randomly choose one. We're going to see what we're given. I'm given that this x is 3,000. I'm given information about y. I'm not given so much information about d. Can I find information about d? I can if I really wanted to. However, we're starting off with x's and y's. Why not just use the stuff that we're given? Okay? Now there's my angle. y, x. Which trig function will help me use, will help me get a theta and use as x's and y's? Tangent. Good. We're thinking about it the right way. So, we'd say the tangent of an angle is equal to the relationship between the opposite, which in this case will always be the vertical, divided by the adjacent, which in this case will always be the adjacent. Uh, divided by x, which in this case will always be the adjacent, okay? Good. Now, this is just for any tangent of any angle is equal to this ratio. But we have a specific situation here, and we know that this person is always 3,000 feet from the launch pad. So I'm going to rewrite this formula knowing that this is always going to be fixed. This allows me to take the derivative and not have to use the quotient rule, which is going to help tremendously. Okay? Okay, I am ready to take the derivative. I'm trying to find d theta dt. I have all my other information, so let's go ahead and do that. I get secant squared theta d theta dt is equal to don't use the quotient rule here, but be careful. Since y is in the denominator, I mean, is in the numerator, we can write this as 1 over 3,000 y. Its derivative would be 1 over 3,000 dy dt. No need to use the quotient rule there. All right, I'm trying to find d theta dt. I'm given dy dt, so I got d theta dt is equal to 1 over 3,000 times 800. But I have a problem. 
I need to find the secant squared of theta. Yikes. How do I find that? Actually, not that bad. Okay. Because it's the secant squared of theta. I don't have to find actually what theta is. I just need to find the secant of theta. We know how secant is related with cosine. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so the x over the d. The secant of an angle is just going to be d over x. So I just need to find d over x. Well, I do need to find d. d is not given to me. But I can find d when x is 3,000 and y is 4,000. The problem is set up nicely so that you get a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So that goes in here. And then the x is 3,000. That's a fixed. I get that the secant of theta is 5 thirds. Well, secant of theta squared will just be 5 thirds squared. So I just have 25 ninths here. That's simple. got to use the length measurements that are given to you and that you just found. So you can then solve for d theta to dt. 8 over 30. Times 9 over 25. And that comes out to be what? What is it as a decimal? Somebody just give me the decimal. 0 0.096. This would be kind of radians per second for an angle measurement. Okay. Great. All right, we're going to skip the ladder angle. We're going to go to the fisherman angle. I hope that it's set up the right way. All right, let me just kind of draw the picture for you of this fisherman. It's kind of a tough uh, thing to understand unless it's drawn for you. So we got a fisherman sitting on a dock. His reel is six feet off the water. He's reeling in a fish. So this length right here is six. He's reeling in a fish. I don't know why I keep doing that. Boom. The fish is going to be kind of skimming across the top of the water, so he's going to be moving horizontally. It's a big fish. And he's reeling in the fish at a rate of one foot per second. So actually this length of this line is DDDT. That's negative one. Okay. The question is, how fast is the angle here between the water and the fish fishing line changing when the fish is six feet away from the dock? So when this is six. Okay. So the question is, how quickly is d theta dd changing? Y is 6 is a fixed value, assuming that the line stays still. X is 6 is the changing value. And DDDT is negative 1. Okay. Well, in this situation, I'm given information about x, y, and d, okay? So it's like I can use any trig function I want. But 
What I'm going to pay special attention to is my fixed value and the D whatever DT that I'm given. That's information that is going to be very useful when I take derivatives is a fixed value and a rate of change. Okay? Now, seeing where my angle is located, looking at the two pieces of information that is the most valuable pieces of information, you guys discuss with your neighbor the trig function you should use for this situation. We should be using sine, okay? Fantastic, if you figured that out. And, yes, the sine of an angle is equal to y over d, but for this specific situation here, we know something that's always consistent, the y is 6. Now, I'm glad I'm doing this example because I'm ready to take the derivative, but I'm ready to show you where a lot of people trip up here. Derivative of sine theta would be cos theta d theta dt. The derivative of 6 over d is not 6 dd dt. It is something. The key, and what we have to be careful since our variables in the denominator that's 6d to the negative first. You need to use the power rule to take the derivative of 6 over d. You could use the quotient rule if you wanted to, but the derivative would be negative 6d to the negative second times d d d t. So d actually doesn't go away on us here. So that's negative 6 over d squared. So we actually have to find d. I'm not given d, but no big deal, find D when X is 6 and Y is 6. 6 squared plus 6 squared is equal to D squared. I'd find out that D is equal to 6 root 2. That's just your 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay? So I have that. I can find also the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's the x over the d. I know that the x is 6, the d is 6 root 2. So this is just 1 over root 2. Plug in that information, solve for d theta dt. Oh, it's going to be like pretty simple. 6 squared times 2. Well, that's just going to be 6. Root 2 over 6 times 2, which is 1 12th. Anybody else get 1 12th? Should probably show more work. Negative. So that would be positive 6 over 36 times 2. That's 1 over 6. That's 1 12th. Root 2. I forgot about the root 2. Root 2 over 12. Negative times the negative makes it the positive root 2 over 12. I have the negative 1 being multiplied by the negative 6. Let's see. Does that make sense? That positive. Does a positive make sense or a negative make sense? If the fish is getting reeled in, the fish is getting closer and closer and closer to the dock, 
What's happening to this angle? Is it growing or is it shrinking? It's growing, right? So that does make sense that this is a positive. Okay? Questions about that? Two more problems to do. And both problems deal with fixed proportions. We had a couple fixed proportion problems already, like the sand pile, where the height was three times the radius or something like that. The rectangle perimeter, where the length was twice the radius. The difference between this problem and those problems, that those proportions were given to you. These proportions you need to create. Okay, here we go. Water draining from a conical tank. We'll talk about this conical tank as being a tank that's vertex down, where the water's kind of getting poured out of the spout, like those little triangular cups of water. The radius of the tank is 10. The height of the tank is 25. It's Draining at a rate of 3 inches, cubic inches per second, so that's dv dt. Since it's draining, I'm going to say that's negative. Question is, what is the rate that the radius is changing? And it's the radius of the water. So go ahead and include that, radius of the water. When the height of the water is 15. Okay, so here's the tank with those specifications. Here's my water. Water's draining from the tank. The height of the water is changing, and the radius of the water is changing. I know the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h, so we'll need that. But, we're going to be talking about the volume of the water in my cone. I can't plug in 10, and I can't plug in 25, because that's fixed values for my tank. We are talking about the water in my tank. There is no fixed value, because as water is draining out, this radius is changing, and this height is changing. Okay? So I, I don't know what to do. I have dv dt. I need to find dr dt, but there's obviously a dh dt. Okay? Now, we need to use a fixed proportion to help us out. The fixed proportion comes from these similar triangles that occur inside my tank. We know that the ratios of the sides of similar are proportional. So that means the radius of my tank divided by the height of my tank equals the radius of my water divided by the height of my water. This is our fixed proportion or our fixed relationship, which was given to us in the sand problem when we were just told the radius is three times the height. Here we had to develop it. And I just developed it, okay? All right. Well, that means I can, like, solve for R or H and plug it in here. Which one should I solve for? What should kind of dictate the next step? Well, notice that we have dr dt. So I need to find dr dt. So that means this equation needs R. That means I need to replace H with R's. I'm going to solve this for H. I get H is equal to 5 halves R. Just cross multiplying and dividing. I now can plug that in to my formula. 1 third pi R squared times 5 halves R. I can simplify that. We get 5 6 pi R cubed. Now, I'll take the derivative 
and plug in our information and find what I'm trying to find. DVDT is equal to uh, five halves pi r squared dr dt. dr dt is what I'm trying to find. I'm given h is 15. Well, I need to find r when h is 15. So that's 30 over 5, that's 6. r is 6. dv dt is negative 3. Solve. Okay, and the rest is just solving. So we need to develop the fixed proportion. Now, I'm going to start doing the last problem. I'm not going to solve for DRDT. You guys can do that. But this is a very important problem. I've seen this problem often on an AP exam. Here, the formula is the proportion. The bell rings, I'm just going to keep talking. If you need to go, you can go. Probably would prefer you stay. Here we go. We got a lamp post. Height of the lamp post is 20 feet. Shining on a five foot tall person. The disproportional person there who is 10 feet away from the lamp and creating a shadow. I'll call that shadow S. So I'm going to switch it because my S's look like fives. I'm going to call it shadow W. Okay? The person is walking away at a rate of two feet per second. We'll call that a DXDT. Now we're told that he's 10 feet away, but he's walking away. So this is an x equals 10, but this is changing. That's very important, that understanding that that length is changing. This is a y that is fixed. Okay, good. How fast is the shadow increasing if the person is walking this fast? Okay, now a lot of people think this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. It is not. This is just straight proportion. Here are the two similar triangles we need to talk about and we need to use for our proportion. It's the big triangle created here and the small triangle created here. That gives us two similar triangles. The ratio of their sides are going to be proportional. So I can set up the following proportion, 20 over. It's not 10 plus W, it's X plus W because X is changing. That's going to equal 5 over W. I can actually just simplify by multiplying some things out. I get 20W equals 5X plus 5W. I can subtract 5W, I get 15W is equal to 5X. I can take the derivative of this to get that. 15 dw dt is equal to 5 dx dt. dx dt is 2. I can find dw dt 10 over 15, 2 thirds. Okay? A very interesting problem. We don't use the Pythagorean theorem, even though we think we need to use it. We actually use proportions. Thank you for sticking around.